The New York Times is reporting that nationwide ICE raids on undocumented immigrants living here in the U.S. will start this Sunday. Let's get right to CNN's Nick Valencia. He is on the border of El Paso, Texas. What do we know about this, Nick? Allison, you remember the raids that were expected to happen back in June in 10 major U.S. cities that were later called off in an unprecedented announcement by President Trump. Well, those raids are back on. This, according to The New York Times, who spoke to two current Department of Homeland Security officials as well as one former official. They say the raids are expected to happen on Sunday and last several days. The target of these raids will be at least 2,000 undocumented immigrants with current removal orders. But how these raids might be different is they will also, according to The Times, include collateral arrests, meaning even if an undocumented immigrant is not the target of a raid but happens to be on the scene of one, they too may be detained by ICE officials. Now, U.S. Customs, uh, U.S. Citizenship and uh, Immigration Services Acting Director was asked about this. Here's what Ken Cuccinelli had to say. They're absolutely going to happen. There's approximately a million people in this country with removal orders. Um, and, uh, of course, that isn't what ICE will go after in this. But, but that's the pool of people who've been all the way through the due process chain. According to the New York Times, the Trump administration's goal in these raids is to send a, str send a strong message to those who are thinking about crossing the southern border illegally. The roundups that we will see of undocumented people who are already living here in the U.S. The president had threatened that, has threatened it for weeks, but nobody knew if it was an idle threat or if it was really going to happen. Nobody could sort of imagine what it would look like if it were to happen, but now it's the New York Times reporting, as you know, that it is going to start this weekend. Well, we're not going to have to imagine anymore that what my colleagues are reporting is that the, it will start to happen this weekend, and it really will be a test. It will be a test of a couple things. It will be a test of the Trump administration's ability uh, on just a level of sort of competence and coordination and legal responsibility to carry out uh, its stated and desired policies. It will be a test of whether Democrats are able to uh, push back and scrutinize their behavior, the behavior of the administration effectively. Uh, and it'll be a test of the country. One of the big uh, uh, criticisms of the idea of mass deportation for years has been the country would not stand for it. That, you know, when people see images of families being uh, sort of rounded up together, that it just would be untenable for an administration. We're going to find out if that's true. Some details in this report. It's going to initially target some 2,000 migrants and their families. Uh, it is going to focus on at least 10 cities. These people will be brought to detention centers in Pennsylvania and, I believe, Texas, two states. Texas, the Texas one is concerning since we've all seen with our own eyes and heard for months now that they're overcrowded and can't take any more people. And, and there's a quote inside this story in the New York Times today. Agents have expressed apprehensions about arresting babies and young children, officials have said. Role. Do you think they have their ducks in a row here for these raids? Uh, you know, based on, on the Trump administration's competence so far in, in conducting these large uh, operations that involve a lot of logistics, no. And I think they're taking a real risk here because by the, one of the things that sets this administration apart from the Obama administration in terms of immigration enforcement is the Trump administration conducts what they call collateral arrests. Basically, they may, may have someone who they're looking for who has a final order of deportation, but if they go to an address, they'll arrest everyone in that house who they think is undocumented. Number one, that opens the door for racial profiling of Latinos who may not have the documents with them. But number two, we have in this country about four million kids who are citizens with par a parent who is undocumented. We have five million kids, U.S. citizens, again, who live with someone who is undocumented. So this raises the possibility of a new round of family separations. And given what we've seen over the last few weeks about the horrendous conditions in detention, in these facilities, even in, in uh, Health and Human Services custody, who in this country feels comfortable turning over these children to the government, the government's care when sometimes they can't even find them later. So it's a very, I think it's a risky strategy for the Trump administration that way, and especially given that right now about 60% uh, percent of Americans favor giving the undocumented some legal status or path to citizenship or some way to adjust their status and stay. See, I think what the Trump administration will say is that these are all folks that they're targeting with deportation orders already. So this is not what's happening at the border where somebody shows up for asylum and they get put in a cage and separated from their children. This is, these are people who've been adjudicated. And so what the Trump administration, Catherine, will say is that you must have law and order 
And if you have been adjudicated to be here unlawfully, you must leave. And I think that that's something that does resonate with voters, and voters certainly understand. But of course, the devil's in the details, as we've all seen, because they haven't done this in any way that has seemed streamlined or often humane. Well, and if you look at the uh, the data on who's being detained, the most serious criminals, detentions of the most serious criminals, has, has actually fallen under this administration. Detention of people who have either much lesser crimes or have no crime at all other than unlawful status, their numbers have shot up. So, you know, for all of the talk of law and order and getting the bad hombres out and all of that, they're being very indiscriminate and they're just creating a climate of fear. And I would point out, it's not only these very visible raids that we should expect to... Uh, presumably happen soon, there's been a lot of other stuff happening sort of under the radar that is also contributing to this climate of fear and mm -hmm. animus towards immigrants, including an ongoing rule that Ken Cuccinelli suggested is going to be finalized quite soon called public charge that basically says mm -hmm. if you or anyone in your family uses some sort of uh, services, whether that's uh, health services, maybe for your kid even, who's a U.S. citizen, uh, there's a little bit of, of unclarity about what that means, uh, that you can lose access to a green card you can be kicked out. Again, people who are here lawfully. Um, so th there's been a lot of intimidation of this population to, to keep them from doing the, the kinds of things that they, they need to do to keep their family safe. Very Look quickly. at the question on, of the resources here. The government is saying they're going to do these mass raids of nonviolent people. And meanwhile, they, on the other hand, they're saying they don't have money to provide soap and toothbrushes and right. blankets to children in detention. Anything political about this? Would it be naive, Alex, to say, hey, we're a week and a half before a democratic debate? hey, the president wants to play to his base here with these visible raids. I, I don't think it's ever naive to suggest that the president might be uh, leaning into the immigration issue for political reasons. Um, it's one of the reasons why when we sort of look at the large shape of the 2020 election uh, and people within the Republican Party, within the media, sort of keep on uh, pressuring the president to talk about the economy, talk about the economy, talk about the economy. He doesn't want to talk about the economy. He wants to talk about national identity, uh, the security of America's borders, and his resolve to do things exactly like this. We're going to see what kind of reaction the country has to it as it plays out.